Hey guys and welcome back to another video. First off, before we're starting with the video, a huge sorry to you guys that I was not uploading yesterday. The reason for that is like all of the stress with the qualifier testing bases, building bases, making like last second tweaks and everything. It's so freaking stressful that I was just not able to first off on, on uh, Thursday, I wasn't able to stream on yesterday. I wasn't able to upload a video. I'm sorry for that. I hope you guys will like the next couple of videos for that because I have a couple of really nice videos coming your way. Today we take a look at the new troops in the qualifier because I want to show you guys a couple of the attacks from our first war where we faced off against alternate attacks. One of the arguably best teams right now in the world and this match could have went either way if we're completely honest. Like it was a super close match, only a couple of percentages and it in my opinion showed where we're heading hit, hit rate wise and base building wise because both teams obviously try to like defend the new stuff, try to defend the new zap spells and it didn't really work that well. Like there's so many crazy strategies out there right now and we're not even talking about the old strategies like Queen Charge Hybrid is still strong, Yeti Smash is still strong and then in addition to that with the last update there were so many new things added and today I want to give you one question before the video and after the video, after watching the video, I want you guys to answer the question down below in the comments what you guys think. And the question I have for you guys, what do you think about the new lightning spell? Do you think the new lightning spell should be able to damage the clan castle? In my opinion, the clan castle is a storage the same as, for example, the town hall. So in my opinion, the lightning spell should not be able to make like deal damage to the clan castle. What do you guys think? Do you guys think there should be damage onto the clan castle? Or do you think, or like, do you like the new strategies which were evolving everything? Or do you think it's too strong? There are just too many different things. Let me know. And like I said, after watching the video, because I want to show you guys a couple of different variations. Because so far I have uploaded a video onto the Zab Lalo. Today I want to take a look first off of an attack of us. And this attack was crazy. So really, really nicely done to us. And we were really trying to, to aim for kind of um, not giving too much value to Zaps regarding the Lalo. And this is what we kind of tried on this one. Even though you can Zap um, quite a bit on this one, the Lalo wasn't too easy. The Lalo wasn't too easy to execute. And we didn't really expect it to have some like to someone doing mass hawk riders after that, but it makes sense. It makes sense, right? Because hawk riders normally have um, how do you say the possibility of avoiding a lot of the traps because you're trying to defend more like Yeti Smash with the spring traps or hybrid. So if you're doing a mass hawk rider with 44 hawk riders, you can dodge a lot of the spring traps. And one thing which I liked a lot about this attack strategy as well is. The Siege Machine. The Siege Machine in a Mass Hawk Rider attack most of the time is kind of wasted because what options do you have? You could go for a Slammer. Well, if there's an air defense at some point, it's not that worth it. You can use Blimp. Ah, not that great either, to be honest. A Siege Barracks, well, you don't need the P.E.K.K.A. on the outside because, to be honest, you don't need the Funneling on the outside. So the Ram for the Town Hall was really, really nicely done by him. And then, in addition to that, one thing... Yes, there are three heroes on the back end, but with the new headhunters and jumping walls and everything, and just to take a look at the bottom, he took out the enemy two heroes with his king and one headhunter. So, really nicely done by us. Now he has one more freeze to go, using that freeze on the back end, and this base is completely wrecked. Even though in the end, it is it is going to be close, because you have only two heal spells for the entire base, and you guys can see there are a couple of giant bombs into the bomb tower, which are dealing tons of damage and there are not that many Hawk Riders left anymore. So you could consider it being a kind of close attack in the end, but still it is a triple. It is a really nice attack, which he did. And well, I, I just think the Zap spell is so crazy strong. You have so many different possibilities to go for. And the Zap mass Hawk Rider attack is an, another strategy which you need to consider. And well, this was the first triple, uh, which I want to show you from this war. You guys saw already there were tons of triples in this uh, in this war, but on this one we want to mainly concentrate on the new stuff, like the new strategies. And with the Zap 
uh, Quake, Mass Hawk Raider was one of them. So we want to take a look at the next attack as well, because there was Nick going on boom, and he's doing the Zap Earthquake as well. And one thing which he's doing on this one, he's going with the Lalo after that. Like I said, those are kind of the new, the main things you're going for after that Zap Quake. You can go with Lalo, Mass Hawk Raiders, for example, and there are many more things to go. Like I will obviously do a video about most of those strategies after the um, the cup, like the qualifier. But there are so many different things you can uh, do right now, which you most likely haven't even thought about. So yeah, this this uh, attack over here was a little bit chaotic because <laughs> he started his attack like his sui in the beginning and completely forgot about <laughs> the zap spell. So that was a little bit. Um, how do you say, a little bit concerning, um, because like at some point Maxi was screaming like, you still have the zap spells, use the zap spells, so I, I don't know if he could have hit one of the heroes, because to be honest, the hitboxes of the heroes are a little bit strange for the zaps, because you only have to like, touch a little bit of building to make sure that there's damage on that building, but if there's only like, if the zap is not right on top of the enemy hero, you won't do damage to that one. And that's pretty crazy. I think it's good because otherwise the zap would have been even stronger. But still, sometimes it feels a little bit strange. But either way, now we start off with the Lalo. Pretty heavy in the beginning with the Lalo. Now a little bit less heavy on the next couple of groups of loons. And he started so far with um, most of his Lava Hounds. And now he's coming into the back end with some more loons. The tests are really well placed against Lalo. I mean, that's something which you have to expect facing alternate. And yeah, you, now you can see this one lonely headhunter running into the enemy royal champion, nearly taking the enemy, champ, enemy royal champion down because uh, the headhunter was in the warden ability. And now it's getting a little bit close because the enemy royal champion is still alive. The minions on the right side trying their best to get through the king to get to the headhunter, uh, to get to the royal champion. But still, there are so many loons, like even though this big group of loons is not looking as there would be too many, just take a look at how many loons are actually dropping by the Royal Champion and still they're barely losing any, like, the loons are not getting less, it feels like. So even though the loons are dropping like flies, there's still loons in the end left to get the, uh, get the Royal Champion down and this is going to be a triple for us in this war and like I said, just showcases how strong this Zap Earthquake attack is. It's nuts. It's nuts. And we saw it yesterday multiple times already. But now we want to uh, like hop over to another strategy which we saw yesterday a couple of times as well. And to be honest, I think most of the YouTubers were screaming like, Super Witches are OP. Well, the next attacker is OP with Super Witches, but I don't know if, it's, if that's the strategy or just the attacker, to be honest. But one thing which we saw yesterday multiple times or well, the Super Witch attack failing horribly. So that was kind of interesting because going into this qualifier, the majority of people were saying, or like majority of players, people I don't know, were saying Super Witches are going to be crazy OP. They're going to decide kind of the outcome of those uh, qualifiers. And one thing which I found kind of interesting, I'm not 100% sure, but it might be that I think Eve Jack was one of the only players who got a triple with the Super Witches in the last, like, just at the first day in the qualifiers. So that was pretty interesting to me because like I said, seeing so many YouTube videos on this strategy is OP and then in the end it's not working at all. It's just showing if you want to have like the best predictions, like which strategies are going to be strong. I mean, maybe it's shameless, but just watch this YouTube channel. It's pretty easy to be honest. But yeah, let's get back to the strategy. It is strong. Don't get me wrong on this one. It is strong. But if you're facing good bases, and I mean alternate, I'm one of the couple of best base builders in the entire game. So if you're facing good bases, those super witches are getting less and less effective. But one thing which is really cool about the super witches is even if it looks really bad for you at some point, for example, at this point, you think like, oh, he has barely 50% and there are only one, two, three Maybe two witches left because one of the witches are getting like is getting fried. The next witch is getting fried by the next inferno tower. So there isn't too much left anymore. But at then then points like, and there are two more big skeletons. So it's so crazy how much of a snowball tube 
the witches sometimes are because it is pretty nuts that um i don't know like they can spawn so tanky skeletons and it's crazy but yeah either way the main message which i wanted to give you guys is the super witches are strong but if you want to like get a bit deeper into the strategy part of clash of clans the lightning earthquake strategy is just way way stronger and you have way more impact most of the time on those attacks and you can plan them out and especially if you're not playing on the highest level of clash of clans you will find in every war a base multiple bases which are getting easily tripled by the zap quake because the current or like the the bases before this meta were mainly built around using those um, stacked cores with a lot of expos with the with the queen near the core and everything so that's something which was really strong and now isn't working at all anymore so that's kind of interesting to me this was one of the few maybe the only super witch triple at the first day so that's nicely done to eve check and that were all of the attacks which i want to show you guys if you want to see our next war it is going to be at uh, something like 4 p.m cet Hey, well, if you want to see the next uh, war from us, make sure to, to check it in and uh, to check at that point in. And well, after that, there are many more cool matches. We have INTZ in this, we still have alternate attacks in this, uh, we have still Dark Muzan in this, and um, many more other really, really strong teams. So, looking forward to see you guys in the chat. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys will be back tomorrow for another one. See you guys until then, and bye bye.